who has not heard about BioArctic, the Swedish company working on development of treatment for neurodegenerative disease such as Alzheimer and Parkinson. And they are also with us today at World Trade Center uh, to be with the event uh, investing in life science from seed to success. I have with me Oscar Buson. Welcome. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. So uh, my first question to you is how BioArctic's approach to neurodegenerative disease differs from other companies in the same field? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because our, our main or first focus area has been Alzheimer's disease and we're now moving into Parkinson's, as you mentioned, ALS, etc. And, and our approach has differed in the way that we think that the target matters, uh, which is the way what we do is we design antibodies to specifically go in and target, target proteins that lump together and aggregate in your brain when you get a disease. And, and previous ways to treat this uh, with antibody, antibodies has not been as specific. We've been trying to target exact forms of these aggregating proteins and by that way differentiating from other treatments and that's also shown then in the in the clinical studies we were the first company together with our partner ASI obviously to be able to prove that we could slow down the progression of the disease for Alzheimer's disease and that happened well it's it's two years ago now but but uh, still it was a big shift in the industry and, and has attracted a lot of attention I think uh, from both here in Sweden but also abroad. Is there any other companies that uh, have approached the same way during these past two years? Yeah, so, so there, there, is, there is competition. There's another company now, Lilly. Everybody knows Lilly, obviously. They have a, another uh, antibody that targets another form of the protein a bit later in the, in the progress uh, and more directed to the plaques. And that's also been shown proved to, to slow down the disease approximately the same way um, that we do. They have some advantages in the way they treat. They can do it monthly. We have some advantages in the way that we have much less side effects in our treatment. But I think it's good to have two treatments now coming because this, as I said, has been a graveyard sort of in, in the pharma space. And having two treatments come to the market approximately within the same time frame also helps to, to build this market because it's a new treatment. It's doctors who haven't been able to treat patients before. It's a new patient population. There's a lot of setup that needs to happen in the whole um, in the whole value chain and the whole patient journey. Um, so it's so it's important, I think, that there are two, two products now competing. And it's always good with the competition. Always good with competition. It keeps you on your toes. <laughs> so what recent progress have been made in your clinical pipeline? Yes, yeah, so I think the, the most, uh, there are several things happening now. We, you know, we started with Alzheimer's, obviously, and, and there's uh, progress happening also in Alzheimer's disease because we don't think that the treatment that we have now in the market is, is sort of the end stage. There needs to be more treatment, more options for patients. So we're already working on the next generation. And, and uh, earlier uh, or last year, just before um, the end of last year, we, we seed denominated. So we uh, seed denominated and seed denomination is when you pick a specific drug candidate after doing your early research, you pick a specific drug candidate and you take that uh, to start preparing that for the clinic. And we have two such projects now in uh, Alzheimer's disease combining treatments with something that we call the brain transporter technology and that is something to help bring these treatments into the brain where they have their effect. Uh, one problem with the antibody treatment that we now have approved is that it's uh, less than one percent of the treatment that you get into the body actually goes into the brain to treat the disease. Because of the brain Because uh, of the blood brain barrier. barrier, exactly. So if we can then find a way to penetrate the blood brain barrier in a safe way for patients then potentially we could increase the effect, lower the dose, and, and um, maybe have less side effects as well. So we have two of those projects now uh, moving towards the clinic. We hope to have the first of those in the clinic in 2026, around mid-year. Um, and then... And you're taking this to market by yourself, or do you have partners? You know, we, uh, one of them we're already actually working together with ASI, who we have um, a, a long-standing yes. relationship with. We have, we have a, a research evaluation agreement with them. so. Um, you know, that could be together with them. The other one is fully owned by us. Um, if somebody comes with a right setup of money or, or you know, incentives for us to So you're open it, to that. <laughs> we're open to that. We have yeah. discussions ongoing, you know, for, regarding all our pipeline, and that has obviously increased since the first success. But I think, um, you know, so those are two projects. In, Paul, in Parkinson's disease, uh, we're moving forward with two different projects. One is early on, but moving quite quickly towards uh, a pre a preclinical stage. One is now going into phase two uh, mm -hmm. later this year in Q4, so we're preparing that too. 
Um, that's mostly safety and toler tolerability study to prepare for phase 2B, but that's starting later this year. Um, and then I think the, the, the third thing to mention is our brain transporter technology, uh, which we've now brought into all our different disease areas to, to get ways of transporting our, our, um, our treatments better into the brain. But there we're also now preparing to be ready to partner that technology, uh, like in non-exclusive licenses to companies that have other modalities or, or other treatment areas where they want to treat uh, targets in the brain, but need a way to get their treatments into the brain. So how do you scout those companies? Well, either we get approached or we reach out to companies, obviously. We, we just hired a, um, a new BD director, business development director, who's obviously, you know, that's going to be part of his work to, to scout the market and see what, um, what uh, opportunities are out there. But that could be, you know, used in MS or cancer treatment or epilepsy or what have you, areas where we're not, but where there could be a potential of good collaboration with other companies as well. So basically, we now have two platforms. One is this brain transporter technology, which we can out license basically to any company, but keep the technology for ourselves. And then secondly, it's the, you know, developing antibodies, specific antibodies, targeting specific proteins in the brain to help different, uh, uh, to help treat different diseases. Wow, this is great. So what are the company's long-term goals and what should investors expect from Yeah, Biotech? that's a very good question. But I think, I think that's best uh, referred to then what our founder said. So we're in a, we're a very strange company if, if you compare your other early biotechs that we still have a very large ownership from the founders. We've never gone to the market to take in money, only once when we were listed, but that was only a small, small amount. Most of our funding have come from partnerships with ASI or Abvi, who provided billions to us, the Swedish kroners, and that has sort of funded our journey. And now as we, ASI has brought the first drug to the market, we're also starting to get royalties and, and sales milestones. Um, so I, I think the long-term goal has always been by our founders, Professor Lars Lundfeldt and Per Jellefors, is to, to build a new big Swedish pharma company. So we started as a research company very early yeah. on. Now we then went to research development and now we're approaching to becoming a research development and commercial company as well. So far, just commercial in areas where ASI have all the rights, but yeah. we're preparing also to launch in, in the Nordic countries where we will also be part of the, the launch plan. And we're starting to build that commercial organization already. Thank you so much for being uh, with us today. And Thank you. Good luck with yeah, there's all lots, this big journey. Lots of things still to be done. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.